there's been a change in how people organize in enterprise. But with flat hierarchies and self-organizing teams, has the concept of leader, or even team captains, become obsolete and forbidden? That's this week on the Badass Agile Podcast. Greetings, team. Welcome to the Badass Agile Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Williams. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Thank you, my friends, for joining, for following, for commenting, for subscribing. Thanks for being part of the tribe. I love having you all here. Please grab a seat, feel welcome, and enjoy. Listen, there's something about leadership that just feels natural to me. Some people really seem to enjoy leading, and others are quite content to follow. Is that now an outdated concept? Well, first, let's remember why we're here. To create an elite tribe of leaders who truly serve their clients and communities by doing what matters and what works, relentlessly chasing value and excellence like a badass. There are so many resources about what you need to do to be agile, but we're focused on who you need to become in order to lead teams. So let's hammer down those fundamentals to create a unique and powerful force in the industry. If this helps you, tell your friends. You can also submit your coaching or leadership questions and sign up for daily inspirations and weekly videos all at badassagile.com. So go sign up, post your questions today. All right, so when it comes to the changing state and shape of leadership, here's what I observe just from being a coach on the job day to day. Number one, people need a little push. Perhaps one of the reasons why leadership feels so natural is because in new and uncharted territory, fear sets in. Now we've discussed the nature of fear, fear of change, especially in the past. By now, we should all know that even though it's an often unconscious reaction to change and challenge, We can't really call it completely irrational. That's unfair. Left alone, some people might never learn to lead. A great many people are just more content maintaining the status quo, leaving things as they are, because it's more comfortable. The job of the leader should be to prompt and to push your team members to accept and embrace change and their evolving role in it, and to engage in healthy behavior that leads to better innovation. And number two, this leads to my next point. I think that the boss as a drill sergeant is largely dead. It's far more acceptable, and in fact, healthy best practice for a leader to be someone that helps people grow and challenging themselves in ways that are sustainable. So that means stretching boundaries gently at their own pace to a point, and yet still not letting people off the hook for growth. Number three, don't forget, The leader sets example. In this way, the leader can be thought of as a sort of teacher. When there are values and behaviors that we want to model and adopt, the best way to do that is to show others how it's done by example. So this requires a leader who can display advanced knowledge and understanding of the required behaviors and encouraging the discipline to display them on a consistent basis. So when you look at it this way, the leader is more of a coach who helps people on their development journey and less of a person in command. And finally, number four, the leader shares wisdom. The leader may not have extraordinarily deep knowledge, surprisingly, of the subject in which they're leading. In fact, I'll often state that I don't need to know how you do what you do or even what you do to a point in order to coach you. A leader becomes one, not because of their seniority or their years spent in the rank and file earning their stripes necessarily, but through the general wisdom gained and their ability to share it with others. And this is when it's so important to note that leaders and hierarchies are not the same thing. A hierarchy or pecking order in which greater privilege and control is afforded to those higher up and people who are lower or newer in the hierarchy are often measured on how well they follow orders of those above. This is where we should make an important distinction. 
Yes, leadership continues to be important, but leadership is not a badge that you earn. It's a skill that you develop along with all of your other job skills. So for this reason, it's really important to find ways to rotate leadership amongst teams and team members. To let other people emerge as leaders, not just when the time is right and they've paid their dues, but on an assigned basis or in key moments to prompt people to grow into their leadership role. See, sometimes leaders can emerge situationally. For example, when the wheels come off or some emergency happens, there are certain people who will all of a sudden step up and take the lead to help other people overcome their fear, coordinate, and orchestrate accordingly. But it's equally important to appoint people into rotating leadership roles, even if it's on a weekly or monthly basis, so that the team still has a leader, someone to be accountable, offer direction and support, set the pace, help people stretch and grow, without making leadership a permanent assignment. That is to say, the job of a traditional manager. Now look, there will always be hierarchical leaders. In fact, the larger the organization, the more this becomes necessary. But the firm lines of leadership are changing. So this week, you can encourage leadership participation and rotation in the following ways. You could rotate people who facilitate sessions. So if you're running demo retro stand-up, you can change who leads those sessions so they can learn what it's like to not only lead one, but to respond to challenges in the line of fire. You can also rotate people to provide training to the team in an area that they're expert in. And it doesn't have to be a half-day or full-day course. It could be a 20-minute teach-back session, an hour-long lunch and learn, anything on the spectrum. You can even rotate decision-making on a weekly basis. So anytime there's a call that has to be made in the room, you can point to this week's or this month's team captain and ask them to make a call. And if you're worried about the damage that they might do, which, trust me, is not really a big issue, you can always let them know, we will be here to catch you if you make a mistake. We'll be here to provide feedback on your leadership performance. So don't worry about making the wrong call. The whole team is here to support you. Now, if you don't like the rotation idea, then you can also find an area with each and every team member where they're showing strength, where they're showing initiative, where they're showing growth, and ask them to spread their influence or knowledge to others. As an example, I've worked with fledgling scrum masters who are struggling to come out of their shell a little bit. They don't see themselves as leaders traditionally, but here's the reality. Everybody latches onto something. So this particular leader was gaining experience on the ground of customizing Scrum to a particular team's way of working. They're a team that behaved a little bit like an innovation center. They're constantly seeing new, different, and short-term initiatives where speed and time to market is incredibly important, but because the projects are so small, they can customize and tailor backlog grooming and sprint planning to fit their needs. So this person has unknowingly become an expert in how to do that. And there are other areas of the organization that desperately need that kind of expertise and skill. So that person now becomes the resident expert. For example, anytime you're spinning up a team that works in a similar way, this person can now show up as a leader and provide opinions and expertise and guidance on how to get started and avoid some of the mistakes that they made when they were first coming up. The point is this. We still need leaders and captains. And it's a tremendously important skill for each of us to develop and foster. Not only to make the organization more powerful, to make the team more powerful, but also to enable the fulfillment and the happiness of individual team members who maybe want to become leaders someday, but are afraid to get started. So as a service to your team, make sure you're trying some of these techniques this week. Find ways to rotate leadership or at least shine the light on the emerging leader in each and every one of your team members. Folks, thank you for listening. You can reach out at badassagile.com or find me on Twitter at badass underscore agile. And I'll see you next time.